cops don't like me. So I don't like cops. Badges don't grant extra rights. This is Cop Block Radio on the FPRN Radio Network. Here are your hosts, Eric, Adam, and Scott. And welcome everybody to the Cop Block Radio Show for October 16th, 2013. You're listening live on FPRN Radio, or you have downloaded the podcast. And if that's the case, we are live every Wednesday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, 6.30 Pacific. Uh, with me tonight, uh, I have Adam, because Scott is drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I, like I figured I'd just throw it out there. Because <laughs> Scott is drunk. <laughs> <laughs> well, Scott, Scott's technically on a road trip, so he's having himself a good time tonight. Shame on you. <laughs> Oh, no, shame, shame on me. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the good thing about having three of us that we can uh, we can just uh, take off a day if we have to. I'm so, gonna go out drinking, so you guys have fun. <laughs> so, also awesome news about FPRN that we are now off Mixler. I hate Mixler; it wasn't very good. <laughs> and now we actually have a real chat room that updates in real time and each post isn't like a quarter of your screen so if four posts goes up then you gotta scroll down that was really annoying oh and they have uh like 800 different types of streams you can connect to and now you can use the tune in app and listen live to fbrn which is great too oh you can use the tune in app now yeah oh nice it means everybody can get on android now huh Yes, that is a big nice. thing because I used to hate that because it's like, well, I would listen, but I have my Android on me, and if the screen goes dark, then Mixler stops playing. So uh, that did me no good, and Mixler was not interested in adding a Android app apparently because all they had was the iPhone one, and uh, I don't have an iPhone, so that wasn't very good for me. But now they have all types of streams you can listen to, so now you can listen to pretty much on any device that can connect to the internet. So that's cool. So now I'll have to listen to them while I'm uh, exercising or something. When I (laughs) exercise. There you go. (laughs) Um, So yeah, uh, this is, since this is live, uh, you can call in and talk about what's going on in your neck of the woods if you want to. The number is 567 Three one four two nine. Sorry, <laughs> we'll totally scrap that. It's five six seven three one four nine two nine six, and then hit one two three four pound. Or you can Skype us at FPRN Radio Live. But if you are listening to this live at fprnradio dot com, there's a nice little Skype icon, or you can just click, and it will connect you directly to. To the producers, and they can uh, get you on the show. So if you just go to uh, fbrnradio.com and then click the listen tab, and nice. it should be all good. That's pretty cool. We got a nice little upgrade there. Yeah, it's about time. It's great. <laughs> it's good stuff. I'll just give it a I was, I was unaware of it until literally just now. <laughs> I know. I, I I wasn't aware of it until about an hour before the show started, and I saw him like, oh, wait a minute. We got an awesome uh, chat room yeah. now, so we can actually have a regular chat. And... Yeah, that I, thought you were gonna, I thought you were going to call me out on the phone number there for a minute. <laughs> no, I'm so <laughs> dyslexic. I'm looking at it right now, and then I totally backwards the numbers. I'm like, wait, uh, that's not yeah, right. Because you usually call Scott out on that, and he's never ready. And I was like, oh, he's going for the phone number. I got it ready. <laughs> and then you read it. And I was like, oh, yeah, well, it's convenient. Sweet. It's right underneath the chat window. So now yeah. I'm not going to I'm not gonna miss it, because if you're listening to it live and you're in the chat room, I am reading the chat room. And it's way more convenient than the Mixler one was. It is. It is nice. It looks good. No more. Oh, now Dio's upset because there's no more hearts. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right 
This is a uh, uh, this is a good trade off, I think. Okay, I it it I'm trying to set up a name in this chat. Maybe producers give me a hand here. I'm trying to set up a a name and it's not letting me. <laughs> well, that's no good. Jeez, now you can't even get in. Yeah, well, I, was, I was trying to set a name for myself so that I have it all set up, so everybody can tell it's me. That's all right. We'll we'll get it eventually. <laughs> So has uh, anything happened in your neck of the woods this past week? Uh, this past week, I'm trying to think here. Um, I know there was some uh, some serious activity going on around my neighborhood the other day, um, my, my new neighborhood. Um, got the camera out and walked outside to film. There was like three cop cars, and as soon as I walked out the door, had the camera on them, all three of them drove off. <laughs> I was like, well, I guess I'm not filming nothing. <laughs> Well, did you move I mean, to the neighborhood? They took your... off too. It wasn't like I could have went after them. They were gone. <laughs> did you move to a neighborhood where you're more likely to see cops, or actually, uh, less likely over your previous neighborhood? It's actually kind of. I would almost call it probably about the same. Yeah. <laughs> Realistically, it's the neighborhood I'm in is a a very nice neighborhood. Great neighbors. Um, you know, up up upstanding citizens I've, I've talked to a lot of the neighbors introduced myself tell them what I do they love the idea that we you know we're associated with cop lock and I film the police um, the problem is there's uh, about four or five blocks away there's a very low income um, housing development that is uh, just old rundown apartment buildings you know like two hundred dollar a month rent and so there's some some serious problems going on over there um, and so there's a lot of cops that end up over there that end up flying through our part of the neighborhood to get to that. So it, it's it's so so, and that's kind of how it was at my last my last neighborhood too. It was uh, the apartment complex a couple blocks away was the problem area, um, and so there was a lot of police activity. It wasn't so so much my neighbors; it was the few blocks away neighbors. <laughs> fun fun, yeah. So um, we uh, continued our streak and. We are, I think last week was the eighth week in a row that we have been out on Friday night doing cop block here in Keene. And it got weird. No, oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. It got really weird. Unfortunately, I don't have the video up yet. I haven't um, gone over to Centurion's house to, to snag all his video because he's computer illiterate. So <laughs> technically challenged or whatever. <laughs> I, he called me out on that on Friday when I when I saw him. He's like, you called me technically illiterate or uh, uh, technologically challenged, and I stand by that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, So I haven't snagged the video, but uh, th there's a bike cop here who I've talked about in the past, Matt Griffin, and he's also the coach of the college or one of the coaches of the college lacrosse team. And he was out on his bike and typically we uh, tend to follow him around. This night got really weird because he followed us around. Like we would stop at an intersection and he would just sit there on his bike the whole time. So we would just stand there for like 10 minutes and he would just huh. sit there staring at us. It was odd. And then he started grilling me, just asking all the typical police questions, because he had never interacted with me ever. So he didn't even know my uh, know my name. And <laughs> so he asked what my name was, and I just gave him my first name. And then he said, what's your last name? He's like, I'm like, uh, I'm not giving you that. <laughs> and... and he just asked questions over and over and over again, and uh, it just got really weird because instead he was following us around. So we literally sat in the parking lot while he asked me questions for like 20 minutes, which is great because he's not doing anything harmful to, to peaceful people. So that's a plus. Um, and then again, like his walkie talkie died or something. So he had to go get a battery and... Then he was back out following us again, and we were just kind of basically going around in circles and just sitting at sitting at intersections waiting to see what he was going to do, and he was asking what we wanted to do. It's like, well, I'm just waiting for something to happen. So he just stood there with us waiting for something to happen, which was really, really odd. 
And then um, we were talking to some of the students at the college, and we were just there on the you know on the street. And then down the street, we see one cruiser facing one way, one cruiser facing the other way, and the bike cop sitting there too. So we are just standing on the sidewalk on this street, and we're talking to the students for like 40 minutes, and they just sit there the whole time. Really? So that, they, just, yeah. they just sat there and watched you guys. Yeah, so that was really odd. And then, um, so we kind of ran around a little bit, and... Uh, eventually a call came in and a couple of them got pulled off to the call. So I figured that would be a good time to go to my car and head home for the night because it was a really quiet night. There are no parties going on at all. So uh, I wasn't really worried about anything, m- about missing anything serious because everybody was in for the night. And uh, because it was the four-day weekend, a lot of students had left uh, the day before because there's not a lot of classes on Friday if, there's a- if there are any. So... Uh, it, it was pretty dead. So at that point, I made my way to the car, uh, threw my in my bike in my car, uh, headed started heading home, and there was a cop tailing me for about three blocks, and then he turned off. So I don't know if that was a coincidence or not. And then I get home, and Centurion calls me uh, to let me know that the the bike cop is running all the license plates in this parking lot. Really? Which is, yeah. So he's running all the license plates in the parking lot, and he calls me, he's like, dude, uh, can you come drive me home so I don't have to, you know, give away where I live and all that jazz. Um, so it was just, it, it was just a really weird night. And then when I picked him up, like we had cops tailing us for like ever, so I just made a lot of really dumb turns, just constantly going around in circles until we. It was it was really weird. It was creepy. <laughs> Try, trying to lose the cops. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> so like, if our plan didn't work, I was gonna start crossing jurisdictions because we're we're rel- relatively close to other towns, so we could easily cross into other towns and. If they continue yeah. to follow us, it would be really, really odd if they continued out. But that's kind of how it went on, on Friday night. So it was really, really creepy and weird. And I believe there have been some complaints filed, um, some like stalking complaints on the on the police officer <laughs> for following us around all day. <laughs> Good stuff. So he, he continues to be a thorn in our side and... Um, or we continue to be a thorn as his, I guess, because he didn't really do a whole lot that night if he was just following us around all night and uh, didn't get Jack, so. No lie. Yeah. So we'll see. But yeah, we still don't know what the hell he was up to. It, it, like I said, it was just really weird. That had never happened before. So I'm guessing they are starting to feel the pressure of of us being out every Friday night and bugging them all night, I guess. Like so on that front, that. we have um, the Keen Pumpkin Festival coming up on Saturday night, and it is a security nightmare, or I guess a law enforcement nightmare, because not only is all the cops from this city, but surrounding towns and various other agencies are out during that time. And last year, there were something like 162 arrests that night. Wow. At the, at the Pumpkin Festival last year. So we are hoping that we'll have a big turnout for the Cop Lock crew. And hopefully some other people will come in from like Massachusetts and, and whatnot. So hopefully the outside, out-of-towners will uh, come in and help us out because it's just it's going to be huge. And they they end the thing at nine at uh, eight thirty, which is really early for a Saturday night to turn out a a festival or some sort of you know uh, public spectacle, if you will. <clears throat> so we are expecting a very busy night, and so far we have about eight people going. So hopefully we have more because it will be awesome. 
Oh, and I was confirmed that I definitely will be speaking at Keenvention on the direct action panel, which will be on Saturday the 2nd, but the whole thing goes the 1st through the 3rd. So I did nice. get confirmation of that. And we're also doing cop blocking on Friday night of the convention, which is the 1st of November, which is going to be sweet because if we have like 20 people out, it'll be awesome. That'd be really cool if we could get 20 people out there. That would be sweet. <laughs> you would be like a gang like the police force. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I'm assuming that with the pumpkin festival happening this weekend, they'll have most of, they'll be pulling a lot of their regular shifts plus doing this as overtime. So I'm curious what will happen the following two weekends, if it will be a lighter, a lighter oh, yeah. uh, police presence. It, it seems to come in waves. Like sometimes they have like three people on. Sometimes they have eight people on. It, it's it's really a grab bag on Friday nights of how many cops they have on duty. So <laughs> you really never know um, how it's going to shake out. So we'll, we'll see what it turns out when uh, Keenvention's happening. I'm assuming they know this is happening, um, so we'll see if it see if they uh, do anything about it. We'll see. Right. So I saw on um, somebody had posted on the Free Keen Facebook page, um, not a not Free Keen itself, but. Um, a Facebook user posted to them about complaining that there was a case that involved their grandson where he was assaulted and the assailant has been out on bail and the case has been pushed for like two and a half years and she's blaming it on the actions of those in Keene uh, quote unquote clogging up the court system, which is really funny um, <clears throat> because the activists have only spent maybe a total of um, 100 hours in court over this year. So I don't know how 100 hours worth of activists court time could push a case two and a half years. <laughs> but it really speaks to the priorities of the courts here because an assault case is not going to make the city any money. But the underage alcohol possession is going to make them 400 bucks a pop. So you wonder why are they putting crimes that have a victim after these quote-unquote crimes that will net the city a fine instead. You figure they would want to go after the people that actually hurt other people as a priority and then do anything that's going to be a fine. But You would think. <laughs> but like I said uh, a few weeks ago when I was at a Raymond, in a single day, there were over 10 grand there was 10 grand collected on under AIDS possessions of alcohol alone. So that should tell you right there that they don't really give a crap about justice. They no, <laughs> are all about bringing in money mm-hmm. and people who have harmed other people be damned. Yeah. You can deal with that yourself. <laughs> We're just here to make money. Right. So I haven't seen any good responses to that in the opposite refuting that. Because th- all all of these quote unquote cr- crimes that are that are quote unquote clogging the system uh, are all victimless crimes which result in a fine paid to the city and not a uh, you know like a jail punishment type of thing. So mm-hmm. so basically, it's well that case isn't going to make the city any money. Uh, so that's why it's being pushed, not because mm. of people clogging the system with victimless crimes. It's because the court prioritizes the victimless crimes first because they want their dough. And 
they're not really interested on spending money to punish somebody. Because you think it's going to end up costing the state money if they have to incarcerate somebody. But it's going to make them money if they just find the crap out of people. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, it's sad. It's sad what it's turned into. This this whole, it's all about revenue instead of actually doing their job and or protecting the citizens as we pay them to do. And that's something I don't think a lot of people see that it is all money in this case. Um, it is. That's what it's turned into. And there are a lot of people that don't see it. They they don't recognize the fact that it's all about money now. It's It's not about protecting and serving us at all and providing that service. It's about them making money to give themselves pay raises to take home more money for themselves. Right, and that's one of the things I brought up when Matt Griffin was grilling me all night on Friday. I'm like, mm-hmm. well, you, you aren't protecting and serving, plus you absolutely, the Supreme Court has already decided you have no obligation to protect anyways. So uh, I don't see your your so-called serve and protect is, is BS because you have no obligation to do either of those. And mm-hmm. all you're doing is going around and fining people for not harming another person. And you're policing for profits. That's exactly what you're doing. And he gives you, you know, well, they shouldn't have broke the law, blah, 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 blah. It's like, well, the law's wrong. So it's not a, a, a law that is not, um, just is not a law to begin with. It's invalid. So why would you, why would you enforce such a thing? And, he, he doesn't have a lot of substance to add to that. <laughs> of course not. Of course. Not. But I, I unfortunately was not prepared for the the interactions that we had because they had just completely left me alone and never said anything to me until Friday night. So I had gone seven weeks without actually having to engage in conversation. So it was really weird and just caught me off guard and it just weirded me out in general. Cause he was following us around all night. So, uh, if he does that again next week, I'll be a little more prepared with, uh, where I'm going to steer the conversation next time. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's one of those things. I know a lot of people critique that you should have done this, should have done that. And, it's a good learning experience, but if you hadn't done if you haven't done it before, it's really hard to do it on your toes sometimes, especially depending if you if you're quick witted in general, or, or or yeah, I I'm not sure where to go with that, but I guess in talking with authority in general or so called authority, yeah, um, it, it's it's different when you're when you're in the situation than when you're observing the situation. So I, I I guess we need to give our fellows who uh, may should have done something different in different circumstances uh, a little leeway because it is a lot different when you're there than when you're viewing it from the outside. Oh, completely. I, I fully agree with that. When you're there compared to viewing it from the outside, it's, it's completely different. I think this is when we need the flow chart that we were talking about <laughs> last week or the week before yeah. <laughs> it asks this. And if it goes this way or that way, then ask that. And then if, yeah, just so you can get to the root of the problem instead of, uh, not yeah. knowing where to go with it. So did you, my wife originally saw this and it's a story out of Massachusetts. Um, which is so asinine, it's, uh, I don't even know where to go with it, but, uh, <laughs> we have, we, we have audio of it. So if, uh, the producers can play clip three. Please pass the word to management. That, that the Wrong clip three. That's last week's Well, clip we originally. <laughs> 
Oh, good. Honor student being punished for trying to do the right thing. She offered to drive her friend home from a party where there was underage drinking. Police confirmed she was not, but she's being disciplined by her school. ABC's Lindsay Janice has the story. Erin Cox is an honor student and a star player on her high school volleyball team with dreams of playing at college. But this morning, she's sitting the bench after she was stripped of her captainship and suspended for five games in the middle of her senior year. And it's all because she says she was doing the right thing, answering a call from a friend who needed a ride home from a party where there was underage drinking. Erin had just finished work earlier this month when she went to pick up that friend. She goes to a party because someone there says, can you, can you come take me home? I want to go home. She gets there, and literally minutes later, the police show up. But Aaron's school in the Boston suburbs has a zero-tolerance policy when it comes to parties where drinking is involved. And they punished her, even though her family lawyer says police confirmed Aaron hadn't been drinking. If a kid asks for help from a friend, you don't want that friend to say, sorry, I can't help you. I might end up in trouble at school. She's very fragile, and I'm worried about her. I'm very worried about her. She didn't do anything wrong. In a statement to ABC News, the family lawyer also said this, quote, by punishing Aaron Cox, the North Andover School District sends a contrary and very dangerous message that young people are better off letting their friends drive drunk. The parents of one of Aaron's teammates agree. They claim that she, ha she was arrested and she was not. And, you know, they made the decision based on nothing coming from Erin or her family. I would hate to see this hurt her chances of excelling in college. Now, Erin's mother and her lawyer are working to get the school to reverse its decision. She did what she thought was right. And I'm proud of that. Well, we contacted Erin's school and its lawyer. Both declined to comment. Erin's mother filed a lawsuit against the school on Friday, but a judge ruled the court didn't have jurisdiction. Now she's considering other legal options against the school. Larry, you know what they say, no good deed goes unpunished. Yeah. All right, Lindsay, thank you so wow. much. This just exemplifies how zero tolerance policies are bullshit and they... This is the weirdest covering your ass thing I've ever heard. And the, the the lawyer was very correct on stating about the incentives is you're basically saying if a friend is drunk and needs a ride home to let them drive instead. Well, of course, because then the great police can pull idea. over and make like five grand off them for a DUI. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> They don't care about actually actually protecting and and making sure everyone's safe. They want their money. <laughs> so friggin' ridiculous. I I don't know how they can possibly get this through their brain that th this was a good decision. I, no, I, I don't know how the school can think this is a positive decision to it, to suspend somebody for doing the responsible thing. Yeah. Step, stepping up and, and taking charge of the situation and, and helping a friend out and keeping them from getting in trouble. That, bravo to her. <laughs> right. And then afterwards, the police verified the, her whole story that, no, she hadn't been drinking. And, no, sh she had no intention of drinking. And she was just there to give a, a, a friend a ride home. That's it. And mm -hmm. the school comes out and says that she was arrested when that was not the case. And the police back her up in this situation. So mm -hmm. it, it's really ridiculous that the school would take a stance against somebody who did nothing wrong at all. Yeah, no, I, uh, the whole story is just sounds completely asinine in my opinion. Just listen to the audio clip. It's just, I don't know, frustrated me just listening to it. Yeah, and I hope it it frustrates a lot of people because this is the this is the state of public schools. Like you can't do anything these days. I just heard of a a, a school is now banning tag at recess. <laughs> You tag. heard that correctly. I mean, are you serious? Yeah, yes, they're banning tag at recess. Oh, uh, dudes. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk about more about schools when we come back. <laughs> Definitely. You're listening to the Cop Block Radio Show on FPRN.
In 1997, a high school shooting was stopped by a vice principal with a gun. In 1998, a middle school shooting was ended by a neighbor with a gun. In 2002, a terrorist attack was stopped by a school guard and a teacher with a gun. After September 11th, pilots began carrying guns to protect their passengers. Let's give our schools and teachers the same option. Sign the petition at DefendSchools.com. Hi, I'm Trevor Moore. Due to the recent revelations that in order to fight terrorism, the NSA has been using a secret court order to spy on every single Verizon and AT&T customer, Americans have become outraged and concerned about their rights to privacy. But along with that concern comes a feeling of hopelessness. I mean, what can we do? Vote in new leaders? Well, the problem is that during an election, each candidate pretends to not be an asshole. Then when they get the job, they reveal that they've actually been a complete asshole this entire time. No, elections are of no use. The only way to fight back against our country's excessive wiretapping and data mining is to make it irrelevant. That's why we're launching Operation Everyone Talk Like a Terrorist all the time. If we all openly discuss terrorist plots in each of our phone conversations, then eavesdropping on those phone conversations becomes pointless. It's simple. We just need to work it into our daily vernacular. For example, instead of saying, I love you, you could describe a terror attack. The larger the scale, the more you love the person. Hi, Mom. I just got out of school. Can you pick me up? I'll be there in 15 minutes. I'm going to use a truck bomb to blow up the Brooklyn Bridge. I'm mailing anthrax to Pierce to Morgan. Or nonsense about God's will being great could mean affirmative. Hey man, they have a 7.30 show and do you think you can make it in time? God is merciful and his love is unchanging. Did you already get me a ticket? And those are just a few examples. You can make up your own. Have fun with it. But it's time for us to stand up and protect our rights. Because those assholes aren't going to. At Damari Nolo Outfitters, we view the outdoors as our home, not a harsh wilderness. Our gear is chosen for adventure, not just in our backyard, but in the vast expanse of our amazing planet. Damari Nolo Outfitters carries the essential gear and tools you will need to live the empowering mindset of self-reliance. Our products are chosen especially for their durability and quality and are carefully tested by our staff and associates. Our promise to you is we never offer any item for sale we don't use ourselves, so we can offer only what we know to be the best. Our online store makes it simple to browse through our high-quality lines of clothing, knives, tools, load carry gear, and accessories. We are committed to offering you the best American-made equipment on the market, a promise you'll see as we continually add new products. For more information about our products and blog posts to help you learn more about self-reliance and equipment, please visit www.damarinolo.com. That's D-O-M-A-R-I-N-O-L-O.com. Damari Nolo, chosen for survival and adventure. Hi, I'm Steve. I'm Irene. I'm Lisa. My name is Tom. I'm a graphic designer. College freshman. Stay-at-home mom with a full-time job. Scholar on social policy and a barista. And I'm just like you. I'm an Obama supporter. I support President Obama. But the president needs your help. Our president can't launch into another war without you. And remember, we promise to support him no matter what. Together, we can do it. That's why we here at the Americans for Whatever Barack Obama Wants Did You Know He's Friends with Jay-Z have launched a Kickstarter campaign to fund World War III. And America is dead-ass broke, so our goal is to raise $1.6 trillion on behalf of the U.S. government. That's where you come in. Even a small donation would make all the difference. When I first saw the president speak in 2008, in a YouTube clip posted to my Facebook page, I knew he was going to be right all the time. So I support World War III, and IV, and any moon war the president may want to start. I mean, there is no way that he or the cabal of corporate interests, spy agencies, and shadow bankers that tell him what to do would ever mislead us. <laughs> a $25 donation will get you a piece of rubble from a war-torn Middle Eastern country kissed by Senator Lindsey Graham. A hundred dollar donation gets you a day pass to leave your local refugee camp. You'll probably end up in a refugee camp, but it'll have free Wi-Fi. So please, help us reach our goal of 1.6 trillion dollars so we can make World War III a reality. Why? Because Obama. Because Obama. <laughs> Emergency service. 
All operators are busy. Oh, oh God, please help, help me. He's got a knife. You have reached the 911 no. emergency service. <laughs> All operators me. are busy. Please stay on the line for the next no. available emergency no. operator. No. You have reached the 911 emergency service. All operators are busy. Please stay on the 911 operator, what's your emergency, please? Hello? 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 Last year in the United States, thousands and thousands of 911 calls went unanswered. And if you call from a cell phone, there's no way to pinpoint where you are. Yet politicians like Dianne Feinstein call for more gun control. We have one question. Why do these politicians have armed bodyguards? Can't they just call 911? Thanks for listening to FPRN. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. If you'd like to start your own show with FPRN, advertise with us or donate to the network or to your favorite shows, check out our website at www.fprnradio.com. And welcome back to the Cop Lock Radio Show live on FPRN and syndicated across the interwebs. Or you can download it as a podcast at fprnradio.com. And if you just go to uh, shows and click on Cop Lock Radio, you can see our archives and you can download old shows. And then you can also link to uh, show notes for the show. So if we talk about a story and you want to read more, there will be links right there for you. And you don't have to go searching around too far. Or or don't forget, check us out now on uh, TuneIn Radio app on the Android Market. Which is awesome that we have all those streams. So now we have a whole bunch of streams for for the live show, which is at 9.30 p.m. on Wednesdays. Oh, and the iTunes Market, too. Forgot that one. <laughs> Yeah, 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 we're all over the place now. Now you can any device you have, we, you probably have an ability to listen to FPRN radio. So uh, now you can listen to it on the go or at home. And now you're not tied to a computer if you had an Android, because Android did not like Mixler very much. So no, it's all not. good. So uh, so now if you're out and about driving around in your car with an Android, you can now listen to the show live on Wednesday yes. nights, which is awesome. Yes. Or if you're on the bus and you can sing the schools on the bus, go around and around. <laughs> or actually, they probably wouldn't let you do that anymore. So, <laughs> so yeah, uh, the, the tag thing. Oh, my God. I just saw it recently. It's a, a, the school, a school up here is, is banning tag during recess because it's too violent or, or promotes some sort of aggressive behavior of some kind which makes no friggin sense because it was just fine for the past 7,000 years and now suddenly <laughs> it's a problem did you see there's some some comments in the uh, in the chat about a uh, school banning the use of balls <laughs> yes that <laughs> as well I saw that as well that um, they're they're banning hard balls if you will so hard balls. like baseballs <laughs> and Anything well, you, you can get hurt with. It's like really how, how are we supposed hurt to play just sports about anything? Now? So what the fuck? How are we gonna play sports? We're we gonna be able to have weightlifting class anymore then? <laughs> yeah, I know. And they're you know, this uh no one's a loser bullshit and you know, uh don't keep score and, and that's so dumb. Why why would you do that? why would you take the point of sports out of sports? I don't know. It seems like if they're that unsafe, then why are we sending them there? <laughs> I mean, really, what? Why are we sending our children to school if if it's not safe and they can't play with anything anymore? Uh, yeah, you, you just, can't let's play just soccer. pull them out. Come Take on, out. You, you can't even play soccer. You can't keep <laughs> scoring soccer. Really? Come on. Yeah, no, that, that's ridiculous. It's there's been so much recently, and then all the incidents with the with the, the children making paper guns, drawing guns, eating pop tart pipe nah, pop tarts in the shape of a gun. It, it, oh, jeez, that all those stories are just asinine. <laughs> yeah, and it's stupid that they like this uh, anti-competitiveness stuff. It's like uh, if you 
make your kids go through this whole thing where nothing's a competition or there there is no best of whatever they're gonna have a rude fucking awakening when they get out into the real world because uh it doesn't it doesn't make sense to me i mean it's it's well they're training them so that everything's fair but yet it's a full indoctrination system it's to train them to be perfect workers of the real world but yet now they're starting to like shy away from that it, it's the, the school is full conditioning it's to condition your child to do something they don't like to do all day long which would be a job once you get older yeah and, but at and, that point not even you couldn't you couldn't even do a job because even if you have a shitty job they still will cut the people who really suck at it yeah. so uh this is just promoting laziness and taking no initiative and yeah if not, not laziness it, it, it's it's to it's compliance it's it's flat out well don't argue well okay i didn't win whatever <laughs> right that's right, my job not, i don't care <laughs> it's not fostering a spirit to drive forward or succeed or uh, uh, achieve something bigger and, and all that. I mean, if we have friggin' have uh, these people going into like the tech industry, we're not gonna have fast computers in like twenty years because everybody's going to be so stupid and they don't really <laughs> care if they advance technology. They <laughs> they won't know, care. just want to <laughs> stick some stuff on a conveyor belt and let it go. We're <laughs> we're gonna be a friggin' yes. whole mass of dummies. Oh yeah. So the producers just let us know we uh we have a phone call from uh Jess from I'm assuming that is it North Dakota? Yeah, North Dakota. How you doing, Jess? Um so I hi, I'm late. I just got the invite for um well I think it, it was a, for non compliance, but I'm not sure. Um what I'm doing right now is I'm reading the developmental status of early intervention services. Uh -huh. of maltreated children. It's the final report from 2008, and it's from Tammy Mann. She was the one that did the testimony for the sequestering um, for Head Start, which is actually has to do with a lot of educational um, conversation that you're having, but not conveyor belts. Um, I think what mine it constitutes would be free thinking and um, thinking outside of the box. So what I've been doing is I've been going through it, and I'm actually on page 18. I um, have a lot of kids in my house. Um, but what I did find in the manual was it, it was accepted by Congress, and um, it was, writ, um, was submitted to the Office of the Assistant Secretary for Planning and Evaluation. Hey, 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 don't say stupid. U.S. <laughs> Department of Health and Human Services. <laughs> yeah. And I, um, I've been reading through it, and there's 10 criteria for maltreatment. And what they're doing is they're, they're, um, they're treating maltreatment, even if it's unsubstantiated. Excuse me. Go over there. If you're going to argue and say stupid, I'm on the phone. No, 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 no. Sounds, sounds like an uh, uh, implementation needs to happen in that household. <laughs> Right. Yeah, no. we're very. Liberal. Oh, it's a good thing um, they're they're non-compliant. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually, um, I was looking it over, and there's t ten criteria that constitute those that would be high risk for maltreatment, mm -hmm. and it's actually the entire thing is discriminative towards the ninety-nine percent. And what they okay. do is they they take screen-ins and then they evaluate them, and then they use them for different models for collaboration. And the intervention practices basically say that the only way to remove a high-risk maltreatment or an unsubstantiated, which is treated the same way, <clears throat> is to put them in foster care. Because <laughs> that, that's better. Yes. <laughs> right. I'll actually read it to you. It's quoted on page 18, and then I'll find the, um, the 10 criteria. And one of them is non-white, by the way. So that no, makes up non -white. the population. <laughs> oh, non white, yes. Wow. Uh -huh. So page fifteen. Sixteen. This is a large entire like manual. And they're using it social services, Head Start and WIC right now. Wow. Since two thousand and eight. It's called a drig status too, by the way. 
Um, there's a baseline that WIC uses. It starts at zero to 36 months. Um, there's an 18-month follow-up. And then there's another follow-up from 18 to 54 months of age. Now, mind you, they turn this in annually, and they get funding for this. So they, they take families. It says they're, they're uh, voluntary, but I don't think they know about it. <laughs> so they'll use an age, yes. <laughs> they use an age expected developmental model, and then they focus on it. So, okay, so the demographic characteristics, because I don't know exactly where it is, but the demographic characteristics are sub substantiated maltreatment, mm -hmm. which are, this model is from 1999 to 2000. There's a minority status, a single caregiver, the poverty line, less than high school education, or four or more children in the home. Those are spot, um, those are high risk. And then the part C, which is the part where they start, they start pimping you out. <laughs> the part C model is all the services that they have through that are subcontracted subcontra through the county. Now, mm -hmm. in my state, we're called District Seven, and District Seven is uh, reciprocity with Wisconsin, which is primarily a Republican state, and South Dakota. Now, South Dakota is run by Senator Dugard, and he's currently running a foster care program that doubles as his financial um, reimbursement through the federal government. Mm -hmm. And Wisconsin has a program through Tim Pawlenty. He, has, he went from being the governor to working in a privatized sector, and he currently finds insurance carriers that are basically Romney care. Now, back to the 10 criteria that meet the um, maltreatment. Now, if you have three or more of these combinations, you become um, medium to high. So the more combinations that you have of these, the more high risk you are of maltreatment. Page 11. Child well, what's maltreatment the, what's is 100%. The end, what, what's the end goal of the whole thing? Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, <clears throat> oh, it's to reduce high risk. So that's where we wanted to go, where it says foster care. So that's Kaufman, measured delay. Oh, they want, oh, oh, I remember. They state that if you're in poverty, where is that at? That you will become a psychopath. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> serious. If you're well, in poverty, probably turn you're that become... around and say if you're uh, uh, not extremely far away from poverty, you're probably a psychopath as well. <laughs> if you have two billion dollars, you might be a psychopath. <laughs> right, that's what I think too. Actually, <laughs> oh, I'm on, I'm on the phone. Oh, here it is: poverty, cast to psychopathology, diagnostics of empirical nature. So that's on page nine. Okay, young children experience child neglect and abuse are a high risk of developmental problems. Moreover, research highlights the importance of the early years in both physical and psychosocial development. Physical health in addition to the potential to subsequent development of psychopathology, quote unquote, which states that, you know, these environmental, social, um, chronic illnesses that are caused by poverty lead to psychopathology. So the end result is to to try to avoid the low class from becoming psychopaths by taking them out of their environment and moving them into another environment. Yeah, and but that, if that other nine. environment is just as bad as what it already was, what's the difference, right? So Exactly, so and that's what my case proves. <laughs> So, so we're taking them out of taking them out of their comfortable environment, put them in this whole strange, new, weird environment, and that's supposed to make it better. <laughs> yeah, this, it is. This is their reason. Even though one out of yes, I yes, I haven't finished it, but this woman can we not scream? <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> this woman Tammy Mann, she actually she she is the director of Head Start. So this oh. is a nationwide manual. Yes. Yes, it is. And I don't know how I ended up finding it, but it has to do with what I'm going through right now. So my son was actually physically abused in foster care, and we have uh, proof of it on, well, on Facebook. Uh, and congratulations to GOP and the Senate for actually uh, turning over and raising themselves from the grave, speaking of. Um, and that, 
that's my uh, out of the box thinking. I just uh, I plan on taking this and breaking it down and then throwing it out because it's basically a whole book of discrimination from the upper class, their ignorance to the lower class. Oh, here it is. If here's the where it says foster care, page three. Whether or not the maltreatment was shown to have occurred, i.e., is substantiated. If open, some children in NSCAW were served in their homes and some were out of home care, e.g. foster care. So substantiated or not, which means, you know, found to be of merit, some were putting in, put in foster care anyway. We've talked, a, so, we've had a few stories like that where there was no actual abuse happening and yet the kids still got taken away and then while... The, there was one story we talked about where the kid ended up being killed by the foster parents, which is really ass backwards if you're taking a uh, a, a mm -hmm. child who's in perfectly fine condition and being taken care of and putting them in a dangerous situation not once but twice, and then ultimately they die in in the state sanctioned uh guardianship, whatever you want to call it, uh, I, I, I don't see how that's helpful at all. We steal your children. That's, mm -hmm. that's what it is. <laughs> well, that's what Just happened, yeah. Can. They stole my child based on an empirical ideology that he was acting out in class because he was abused at home. That's oh. completely unsubstantiated. No, yeah. that's... Well, he that's was autistic. Wow. <laughs> I acted out in class curious. all the time as a kid. <laughs> I was never right, abused. <laughs> well, it turns out the Head Start isn't technically a class in the first place. It ends up being under the criteria of daycare. So <laughs> I just, uh, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I, my plans are I have to file a medical malpractice um, against the two subcontracting agencies that are through the county. The county is currently... Um, they are, they are controlling their assets. Basically, they're they're protecting their contracts mm -hmm. and using my child as a negotiation tool, and it's really heartbreaking. Wow. But it's inspired by you, Anthony, because I watched your film on how to <laughs> drive away. <laughs> Wrong show. <laughs> without a license, without a name, without a face. <laughs> like, I love that video. You're oh, actually the on the show? Cop Block radio I... show right now, not Anthony's show. <laughs> I'm sorry. I told you I was late, but I still... Uh, <laughs> no, I... you're fine. <laughs> yeah, you're uh, three Is hours it? late. <laughs> I'm three hours late because I'm in the middle of the country and you guys are on the East Coast. But... Yeah, that's all right. Um, all good. We're happy to take your call. And, and what yeah, talk exactly. It fit into the topic that we were talking about anyway. So <laughs> We were on the subject of schools well, and everything. It was perfect. <laughs> Well, speaking of schools and legislation and education, they don't teach legislation. But um, CIPSA, CISPA, you know, um, what is it, Cyber Information um, Protection Security Act or whatever, I found 1104C Section 2, which was the Affordable Care Act. And they were using the word entity in um, both of those acts and that it was a sector reference to the combination of the 1947 Securities Act, and um, I highlighted it to Nancy Pelosi. Moving forward, somehow or another, I looked over the 10-year plan in India, which is what they're going to implement in the Treasury Department. That came out, they had a small conversation about it on the Internet, the Treasury Department. It, and what they do in India is they actually took over the oil field and they actually refine it themselves, and then they allocate that to the deficit. And I thought that was an excellent ideology for our country right now. Secondary to that, they have like a different sectors of the government that have um, completely taken over all the, um, like the coal mining rights and everything like that. All that financing is allocated to the government, which is passed down to the people. And I thought since we, hypothetically, I thought, um, since we're growing as a nation that is comparable to India, we should start um, mimicking their their economics. So, um, just wanted well, to I don't, that I don't think government getting their hands into everything is the answer. I'd 
say that getting government out of everything is uh, a more better <laughs> solution because whenever the government's in it, they screw everything up anyways. Well, on the other hand, um, if we do default, which we will, we'll hit the physical cliff eventually. I believe that we could open up the borders with Mexico and Canada and just start our own um, self-sustaining. And then we can do our own impact. We can start over fresh, just like we did, you know, when we came over from England. And the entire global scheme will fall because they're all based on, you know, the United States exchange for globalization. I think that's the worst thing ever happened. I'm sorry. I love the Internet. But the Internet is what really screwed us at the same time. So I'm kind of excited for that because I know that I'll be able to keep my house wherever I am. Well, yeah, I, I have no, <laughs> no issues with um, uh, open borders and, and people being able to travel freely to wherever they want. I don't have a problem with that at all. And uh, w one of the things, especially with like the debt, if the country that or quote unquote, the, the people calling themselves the country uh, no longer exists, uh, I don't know how anybody can collect a debt from them. So um, <laughs> you can't you can't collect a debt from a dead man. So I guess if the country doesn't exist, then uh, they can't really get their money from anybody. So yep, that I, could, at the other that could side, be one I way to uh, exactly just disappear and would be good. Detroit did. Yes, let's do like Detroit. Only let's do it nationwide. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh that would be a that would be a great thing. But I, I'm not sure how. Yeah how soon that will happen because they seem to just keep sticking gum into the dam and uh, uh, it, it just continues to, to perpetuate. I don't know how long they'll be able to sustain it, but they've been staving it off for a long time and everybody has been saying for a very long time that's going to crash, it's going to crash, it's going to crash. Eventually it may, but uh, I, I don't know if it's going to happen in my lifetime or... Uh, well, I don't have kids, so Adam's kids' lifetime. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I think that they're. I think they're afraid that they're going to lose the Constitution, and they need to find somebody that can write, you know, something along the lines of that. Is what I've heard under spoken in whispers. But the funny thing is, you don't really need a Constitution if you're going to start off fresh, because when the Pennsylvania started, it was just counties and townships. And yeah, I think and I don't think you really need a, a country to overarch your, and have people who mm -hmm. claim to have some sort of ownership over other people even though they don't me too i believe in free trade i think we should just trade 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 and we'd be good exactly <laughs> definitely i'm on board with that well uh thanks for the call uh i think we have somebody else on the line um uh okay, well, Keith, are say you hi with to us? anthony for me sorry you guys uh, no problem We're good thank you is keith with us Yes, I am. How are you doing? Hey, how's it going? It's a pleasure to meet you guys. I am from the Big Plantation. So, uh, what's on your mind tonight? Uh, well, I was just calling because uh, you guys are talking about schools, and a lot of people don't know this, but you know, if you go to your um, some, it depends where you live in the country. Most, mo mostly throughout the country, there's school boards, and they vote on the textbooks that are. Um, you know that all the kids read in every school, and if you if you go there to the school board meeting where they vote on these textbooks, you'll realize that nobody shows up. There are no other parents there, it's just the school board members and the people that are selling the books. So obviously, hmm. the people that are so selling the books end up, you know, getting their school school books put through. Well, there's also the problem with. Uh... Texas. Texas is the biggest uh, purchasing block of textbooks, and uh, unlike most states, they purchase at the state level, where, um, say, here in New Hampshire, each school district purchases their, themselves. So whenever Texas wants to uh, purchase new school book, uh, new textbooks, the publishers do whatever Texas wants. So if, uh, say, they screw around with a, a science textbook and put in all this mumbo-jumbo that y y evolution is not happening and doesn't exist and 
somehow that gets printed that gets out to other states because the 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 publishers are like well texas is the largest buying block they're going to buy millions of these things so who gives a crap about the rest of the states who uh who who value uh scientific literacy but we'll see on that but uh we gotta go to break so can you stick with us yeah i can stick around all right cool you're listening to the cop lock radio show on fprn you're running out of time And the devil's in your basement He's climbing up the stairs He's he- Mr. President, members of Congress You've been making a lot of noise about taking our guns away But you might want to review history 1835, Gonzales, Texas Territory The authorities wanted to confiscate the big gun that protected that colony You know what the people said? Come and take it, because they were willing to fight for their freedom and their guns. So are we. Come and take it if you want it. Come and take it if you think you can. Come and take it, but I warn you, you'll have to pry it from my cold dead hands. We want the freedom that God gave us, so you best not cross that line. If you want this gun, you gotta come through us and take it One shot at a time Just like Gonzalez, we're keeping our guns Do you have a group or organization founded on the principles of personal liberty, health freedom, or accountable government? We invite you to check out Same Side Entertainment. Get connected with leaders in the liberty movement like Tom Woods, Kevin Gutzman, Jack Hunter, Robert Scott Bell, Michael Scheuer, and many more. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and our website at www.samesideentertainment.com. Again, that's www.samesideentertainment.com. Same Side Entertainment, connecting you with the education and resources you need. In every age, a technology is created that upends the foundations of society. The wheel, the printing press, the internet. Now, in a world sliding into financial chaos, a new technology is changing the way monetary systems work around the world. It is called Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a new form of money, controlled not by banks, governments, or corporations, but through mutual commerce between free individuals. To learn more, visit WeUseCoins.com. You have reached the 911 emergency service. All operators are busy. Oh, oh God, please help me. He's got a knife. Help. You have reached the 911 no. emergency service. You're All operators me. are busy. Please stay on the line for the next available emergency operator. You have reached the 911 emergency service. All operators are busy. Please stay on the 911 operator, what's your emergency, please? Hello? 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 Last year in the United States, thousands and thousands of 911 calls went unanswered. And if you call from a cell phone, there's no way to pinpoint where you are. Yet politicians like Dianne Feinstein call for more gun control. We have one question. Why do these politicians have armed bodyguards? Can't they just call 911? Talk about a wake-up call. I was paying for all the doctor's visits, insurance premiums, and medical costs out of pocket. All these expenses were keeping me from living the carefree lifestyle that I wanted. Then the government told me about Obamacare. Now with Obamacare, I don't worry about my health care. I eat whatever I want, whenever I want. I get all my prescription drugs for free, and there's no more coverage gap. I no longer need to worry about pre-existing conditions. We can see any doctor, whenever we want, for any reason. And so can everyone else. Obamacare is not for everyone, like congressmen. If you are already healthy, do not use Obamacare, as you will see your premiums go up. If you are a sick person, do not use Obamacare, as you will see your premiums go up. Many people on Obamacare may experience longer wait times and fewer doctors, and denial of your treatment of choice. If you are faced with a health care situation, you may be denied treatment through government rationing. Obamacare even covers my kids up to age 26. If you experience a recession lasting more than four years, stop taking Obamacare and contact a travel agent to move to the Bahamas or New Zealand. And the best thing is that Obamacare is free. Obamacare is not free. Obamacare will increase the national debt by $863 billion in 10 years. Your taxes will go up $569 billion by 2019. If you see a major jump in your premiums, you should opt out of Obamacare immediately. 
Opting out of Obamacare is illegal and will incur major fines and penalties unless you are a union member who received a special waiver from the Obama administration. Obama is not responsible for the negative effects on the economy, your pocketbook, your freedoms, or your health. Obama solved all my problems. Obamacare. Live your carefree lifestyle. Thanks for listening to FPRN. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. If you'd like to start your own show with FPRN, advertise with us or donate to the network or to your favorite shows, check out our website at www.frnradio.com. And you're listening to the Cop Lock Radio Show on FPRN Radio and syndicated across the interwebs. Uh, before break, we were ta- I kind of went off on the tangent of why I hate Texas. Um, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> I, I, it's just one of the things that that particular issue about Texas ruling over a lot of the, the science curriculum really bugs me because it's sad mm-hmm. how, uh, I, I guess, scientifically illiterate a lot of the country is and it can be a a pretty dangerous thing at times too (laughs) but that's my personal issue (laughs) so uh uh keith what were you uh going towards with the the textbooks and uh people not showing up to to those meetings well you know what, what usually happens is uh in mine is Texas. Most states, you know, you get about three publishers produce all the textbooks for all of the United States. And those three publishers, basically all their curriculum is exactly the same. Um, I actually do not know about Texas. I, I, I didn't know that they didn't teach evolution there. That's actually surprising to me. Well, they, they do, but they try to, every time they come up, they try to stick a disclaimer in there um, that it's the uh the standard line of it's quote unquote just a theory when they're using the layman's definition of theory as an educated guess and not a scientific quote unquote theory that is a backed up by evidence type of thing <laughs> well well yeah but you know i i got to ask you this all right um if it's a theory all right or if it's scientific evidence um scientific evidence is uh definition like if you have evidence it's like you know uh newton saw you throw an apple up in the air right and he saw it with his own eyes that it comes back down so what goes up comes back down that makes it you know evidence right because you see it with your own eyes well right? the d- d- uh it's demonstrably true yeah I, I mean like technically it is a theory because nobody actually watched evolution happen before their own eyes so you well, can't have. you can't experiment it. You can't. I mean, we can't make a flower or anything. Like you can't. Well, not yet. You know, Monsanto is trying to be God, you know, or whatever you want to say. You know, they're trying to make things, but you know, well, it, we, it we, is we, a theory, evolved. just like everything's a theory until it's proven. And I, I haven't seen any proof of anything from anybody's side, so that's where I'm at with it. So well, I, it, 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 on that topic, uh, we have evolved stuff like uh, fruit flies because their life cycle is so short. Um, into a n- new species of fruit fly, um, but it's still it's still a fruit fly. No, well, it's a different species of fruit uh, fruit fly because it can't it can't produce offspring with the original species, so it's now a new species. Yeah, well, if you if you uh, if you take a, a mother and a father and they have kids and then the kids reproduce with each other and they 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 reproduce with their children. Eventually, their children stop having children, and you become infertile. Does that make a new human being? On a very uh, is that a new species? Narrow, narrowed tree. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying I'm saying it, 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 it's interesting because you know, like you, you you look at you know human beings. You know, people are like, oh, we're different races and stuff. You know, black people, white people. Asians, you know, we're, we're, we're all different races, but then all of a sudden we're all one human race. I mean, like, what's the difference between that and a fruit fly? I mean, <laughs> I well, don't know. We can, I, st- I, we can I, still I, I interbreed, think, so we're, we're, we're still on the same level. It's a different subject. I don't even want to go there, to be honest <laughs> with you. But, you know, like, I, 
I, I'm a state rights guy. If Texas wants to be a dictatorship, that's fine. I don't live in Texas. And that's probably why I don't live there, because they already are a dictatorship. You look at their police down there. Um, everybody that drives through that state, it's a nightmare. <laughs> So what about the original school board thing? Oh, oh yeah. Well, it, it, what you can do is you can go to these school boards and go there because they have the they, they have these you know school board meetings, and you can go there and it's a public vote. So you go there with ten people, you can vote no against a textbook, and you can prevent that textbook from getting in there. And also, if you if you have a better textbook that you would like to go in there, you can make sure that that publisher shows up with you, and you can overpower the votes of the established you see like it's the good old boys club you know like these school boards are buddy buddies with these publishing companies and they're they're fettering out you know back you know they, they probably get paid in the back you know what i'm saying so it the best way to change what you know kids are being taught is <clears throat> going there and and if this is in public school obviously you can't in, in private school you know that's a different matter I'm not quite sure how that works. I went well, to a, a private school, and it was uh, more or less like uh, a hippie school, and we were allowed to learn whatever we wanted to learn, which actually was very enlightening. You know, I think that's the way all schools should be. But right, well, you know, I we think that's a somewhere. that's a decent reason to not have public education because, at least in a private system, schools would be competing for students and not. Uh, being given students regardless well, they might I, actually I, have I to agree. you know teach something useful and, and draw people to want to go to their school and not the school down the road how, how do you get how do you get people to break away from the public school system well that that's a whole nother problem and uh you can probably talk to the school sucks guys uh <laughs> about that one uh, luckily I don't have kids and that's how I'm staying out of the public school system, at least with my kids. Cause I don't have any, um, <laughs> but, uh, with other people, yeah, it's a problem because the, the biggest problem, and this is something that a lot of people don't get when they are, uh, proponents of public school is that if I want to send my child to a private school, not only am I going to have to pay for the public school through my taxes, because I have no choice in the matter, and then I have to pay for the private school as well. So I'm basically paying for two schools and only using the one I actually want, and they're forcing me to pay for some other kid's education, even though I have no interest in, in funding this monopoly of public school. So it really yeah. makes why, – why would anybody be okay with taking my resources that I need to educate my child and – using those to educate somebody else's child, even though I, I don't agree with their education. Well, I agree. And like, you know, some, some families have like 10 kids and all their kids go to public school. And then one family has one kid and they can barely scrape by, but they have to pay, you know, just as much taxes as the family with 10 kids. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a, essentially it's, you know, collectivism and, you know, you could say it's socialism or communism where they just force, forcibly take away the wealth from one person and give it to another and you know it's been very wrong i mean my grandparents they grew up in a time where it wasn't public schools teachers like ran off of donations <laughs> right and i have no problem with that it, it, i have no problem with the concept of having some sort of publicly accessible education Though it should not be funded through tax dollars, it should be funded through uh, donations of people who uh, appreciate that service. I have no problem with that. And if that was the case, I would be more likely to to donate money to uh, who I think is doing a good job regardless of if I have a child or not. But in, since the public schools have this monopoly – and they can use the police to force people into paying, uh, regardless of their beliefs or their uh, child status. Uh, it, it creates no incentive that for them to provide a uh, superior product to those who are forced to use it. Well, absolutely, and it's really it's a. 
I think I think it hurts kids too. I mean, when I went to public school for a period of time, and they they shifted me around to different schools and through the whole uh, um, trying to mix up and segregate, you know, poor kids with rich kids with middle class kids. I mean, I I had an hour bus ride, yet the closest school to me was ten minutes away. I mean, like, why? <laughs> you know, like it's the politics gets involved in everything. So right, and well, I've seen that around here. There's a lot of small towns that don't have, say, a, a middle school or a high school, and they send it into uh, to the towns around me. But there are, say, uh, 16 towns in total that go to these two schools, and depending on how much uh, each town is willing to pay, they go to one or the other. So there's actually. Uh, there's a town that's north of me that goes to the school in the town that's south of me, where there's also a town that's north of me that goes to the town I'm in. So it's really, it's really weird how that all plays out, that you could actually live farther away and drive through the town that the other school is in, but because your city didn't offer enough money to get into the, the, that pool, they get to play in the other pool. There's something we got to do, you know, we got to do something. I don't know what it is. Um, somehow, maybe we have to outcompete them, create private schools and, you know, make it so people just don't want to send their kids to, you know, public school. And I don't know what we got to do, but we got to do something for our children's sake. Well, I th yeah, I think that's the, the overall thing. It comes down to the money is how do we remove the money from the system so it incentivizes the – the school that already exists to provide a product that people actually want to pay for. And there's also the alternative types of education, such as unschooling and uh, self-directed learning and whatnot. I, everything that I know that I use in my daily work life, I taught myself school didn't teach me crap. So it, it's one of those things that I would have been way more successful if I was self-directed learning the entire my entire education versus uh, having to spend 13 years in public schools. Yeah, I, I learned more uh, homeschooling myself my last year and a half than I did all the way through public school. So I agree with you, Definitely. Um, especially because you can focus on what you want to focus on and you, you'll thrive in the areas that you belong learning. I mean, like, who wants to go learn home ec, all right? Well, yeah, you're going to eventually have to learn how to do a load of laundry, and that's called real-life circumstances, but you don't need to waste, you know, an hour a day for a year on it, you know? Right, and well, and another thing that's always a problem is the the forced pay structure that the government forces on you, such as minimum wage laws and whatnot. Back in the day, my grandfather, uh, he got paid you know, peanuts to work at a machine shop. But what he got in turn was on-the-job training and an education for, for essentially for free, and they're actually paying him a little bit. But nowadays, like if I want to hire somebody and train them for a year and give them a decent education, but I just I, I can afford to pay them four bucks. Well, that's better than not paying them anything. And it's better than not giving them an education at all. So it, it's on the job training is one of those things that has really gone by the wayside as minimum wage laws have crept the price up that it makes it economically infeasible for somebody to bother training somebody on the job when they can just wait until they get out of college and have a ton of debt and hire them there. Well, no, yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, th and there's another reason, uh, there's another useful thing for Bitcoin. I mean, you can pay an apprentice, you know, $4 worth of Bitcoin an hour and that's untraceable, you know, and they can take that and cash it in. Plus they'll probably have a good return, <laughs> you know? That is a good use of Bitcoin, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good use of a lot of alternative currency. Yeah, no, it is. And, and you're teaching someone. I mean, everybody I ever hired, you know, I'm in construction and everybody I ever hired, like to help me do a job. I, I helped them out with the understanding you're going to learn something. You know, you can take that on with you in life. And that's the biggest thing, you know. So, well, right, well, thanks for having me on, guys. I, I, I love your show. I've listened to it a few times. So, you know, keep up the great work. All right. Thanks a lot, man. Hey, thanks, Keith. Yep. Bye.
So yeah, it's a whole long time. To- I know this is the cop lock radio show, but it's a liberty oriented podcast as well. So we we can we're, we can head down these roads and kind of uh, fully analyze some of the root of the problem of why we have this corruption and the the social ills that we seem to be facing at times and that that definitely rolls over into the authoritative law enforcement realm as well oh completely it all starts with education (laughs) what you've been taught depends on the way you act and feel that the way that you should act right so that's a big part of it so uh let's see I think we have something going on. So, oh, we have Dio. Dio. I was expecting you to call in this week. <laughs> we got a lot to talk about, don't we? Yep. Yeah, um, All right. Where do you want to start? <laughs> well, <laughs> you want to start with the cop that got me fired? Sure. This okay. is a good story. Well, it's a shitty story, but it's a story. Yeah, you know, and not only is it a shitty story, but I'm also getting a lot of crap from the people in Cleveland about it, too. I mean, I don't know whether they're just, you know, cops trolling the site or whatnot, or if it's actual people who really don't think that there's a problem with what happened, you know? I mean, um, I was working at my job, and uh, <clears throat> there was a, an officer that pulled up, he had pulled up. It, it, he wasn't. I don't. I don't know that he was parked illegally exactly. There was no no parking signs or anything there or anything like that. But I know from my own personal view that I would think twice about parking there on account of that. I know that when I came out, I would have some guy standing there with a costume and a badge asking who I thought I was for parking there. Anyhow. So I politely go up to this guy and I ask him why he thought it was okay to park there. He got all pissy and drove away. He drove around me a couple of times and circled around me trying to intimidate me a bit. And then pulled over next to me and uh, started asking me my name, my, like my name, my supervisor's name, stuff like that. And ended up going in, reporting me to my supervisor. And my supervisor called me in the office and said, you're fired because of it. Um, I don't know what he told them exactly, but, you know, I went down and then filed a complaint on him at the police department. I mean, and like I said, I'm getting shit from people in Cleveland saying that, you know, it was a stupid thing for me to do and that, you know, I mean, I agree. Maybe I shouldn't have done it while I was at work, but, you know, I see these things, I react to them That's just the way I am. Um, once again, I, I just, I, there was no reason for him to go do any of that i wasn't like nasty to the guy or anything like that i just asked a simple question so um just goes to show how deep you know the 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 culture of we're above the law and we're going to do what we want to do goes you know it just i mean it's it's pervasive and everything so so dio so basically let me get this right make sure that uh i'm getting this right so you were at work a uh, officer of the supposable law um, parked in a spot that obviously he should not have. You questioned that. He then harassed you and then most likely went and intimidated your boss, which then therefore got you fired. I don't know that they necessarily intimidated the boss. I think that they kind of have a working relationship with them. So it was Uh, more like probably that he just exaggerated what happened. And okay. you know, they took it to heart. So. Alright, so yeah, so he wouldn't have had a conversation with your boss and your yeah. boss felt yeah. persuaded to fire you because of the incident. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Well, that's pretty shitty. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the job of the police department to go around getting hard working citizens fired. Yeah, you know? that's 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 ridiculous. I mean, if you're I not mean, obviously breaking the law or or doing anything illegal or criminal, uh, who cares? Yeah, I mean, really, I mean, you can you're not you, allowed you, to question you, where he parks at all. If you if you look at the video, you see that this guy when he drives around the second time, the freaking hard look he's giving me. You know, it it was a strictly an intimidation thing. How dare you question where I park? Yeah, you pathetic exactly. citizen. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. But on the good news side, 
we had the Storm the Gates event, we ended up uh, going to uh, take a walk in the Cuyahoga National Forest. And was I did check out that video. Up. That was awesome. Yeah. Uh, we actually had quite a turnout for it, so it was very, it, to me, it was a success, you know. It was that, more more turnout <laughs> than I've seen for anything else around here in Cleveland, so. Yeah, no, the video looked great. Looks like you had quite a few, quite a few show up. Uh, what that was that a, was that a park ranger that showed up or? He, or yeah, he was a, he was a park ranger for Cleveland Park, Cleveland Metro oh. Park. Okay, There's, now he's he seemed really cool. Yeah, he he was okay. Um, I think we found a way to get out of the uh, you know having to get a permit because he pulled up. He was like, "Who's in charge?" He's like, "Ain't nobody in charge. It's a decentralized organization." You know, so he had nobody to give the paper to saying what the rule was about getting permits and stuff like that. So I don't think at that point he had anything he could do about it. So he just tried to play it off like, you know, well, here's the paper. So we're not, I'm not going to mess with you today. So. Oh, yeah. But we had the news show up and cover it and everything. So it was pretty cool. Heck yeah, I, no, I saw that. That was cool. You got, you, got, you got the lamestream media to show up and record it. That was good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I, who knew that uh, the vets were going to go do all that shit in D.C.? <laughs> it kind of got lumped in with the same story, you know? It was like they they had the, the D.C. vets piling up the barricades in front of the White House and stuff like that, and then, you know, our thing was, went along with it. Yeah, I think I saw something that they were going to uh, let, what, states open up the national parks within their state if they want to fund it, I guess, at the, the state level? Yeah, I think they said that they were going to have, if, if, if the states could afford to do it, if they wanted to take over the burden, that they could, you know, which I, doesn't make any sense that you have to get permission for that. I mean, you know. <laughs> right, and what what's can, the burden? Yeah, if we can afford it, Not putting up it. barricades, I mean, that's the burden, right? Yeah, you know, if we can afford it, let's do it. It, it, I, it doesn't cost anybody to let somebody in to run around in the Grand Canyon. No. Not a big yeah. deal. I, I don't get how they how they come up with this idea that it's more efficient and cost effective to pay all these people to put up all these barriers than it is to just leave them down and let people walk in. <laughs> Probably because they pay scabs minimum wage to come in and do it. Yeah, but still, even if you're paying the minimum wage, it's still, how is that more cost effective? <laughs> well, because if you had to pay park rangers to do it, it would cost 20 something dollars oh. an hour. Well, that's what I'm saying. Why not just not put up the barriers and then you ain't yeah, gonna pay nobody? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm in agreement, but I'm just saying, you know, that's probably where the thinking is. Yeah, that was always the most screwed up thing. It's like uh, they're gonna lay off 800,000 non-essential government workers. Why do we have non-essential government workers in the first place? Why do we if have they're that many of them? Then get rid of them. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> not why, only that, why do we have that many non-essential all, workers? That's I'm insane. Also, I'm also listening to them all bitch about how, oh, I want to go back to work. I want to go back to work. Shut the fuck up. You're going to get paid anyway. Yeah, you're getting all back paid. You want to go back yeah. to work. You don't enjoy yeah. this time off that you're getting paid for? Really? You're going to complain your about vacation. it? your <laughs> vacation. <laughs> you're going to complain? Really? Yeah. Because I wouldn't. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, paid time off. Hell yeah. <laughs> you get three weeks off. Shit. Yeah. I wouldn't be complaining. Yeah. No, I wouldn't either. But... Yeah, I mean, it's, the event was successful. We ended up, we, we went into the park. We had a nice walk. There was a bunch of people that were, they were coming out as we were going in, and it turns out that there was supposed to be a, uh, like, a sponsored whatever half marathon or something going on on the towpath in there. And they were like, well, you know, people from 13 states here showed up, and they canceled it, so we're going for a walk in the park anyway. <laughs> so that was pretty awesome. Nice. You know, we went in there. We did the, we did a little clean up. We clean up a little garbage we found in there and whatnot. So, you know, we did. We had a little positive effect too. Uh, yeah, I, that's one of the, I think one of the most underutilized tools of activism is if you're going to go somewhere where you are supposedly not allowed to be, do something like that, like picking up garbage, and then it will just make them look even more asinine when they try to kick you out. For yeah, really kind of like, like fine oh, you did you see something. the the guy who was mowing the lawn of the Lincoln Memorial or something? <laughs> I, I did not know. <laughs> there, there was some story is either mowing the lawn at the Lincoln Memorial or outside the Capitol building or something like that. But some some guy just went out and mowed the lawn. 
It was full. <laughs> it was epic. That is like one of the best things you could probably do. Or so. Awesome. Well, thank you, Dio, for hey. calling in, man. Yep, Greater Cleveland Cop Log, baby. All right. All right, we'll be we'll be back in a second to talk more about our wonderful government. All right, thanks, guys. You're listening to the Cop Lock Radio Show on VR. So much money, money for some food and money for a home, money for some new gamer gas or more clothes. Everybody's glued to the tube and the phone. Tired of living in a violent society? If every citizen was armed, no one would be dumb enough to shoot people. It's exactly the ethos our founding fathers had when they wrote the Constitution and then changed it, which is what makes it sacred now. Come mingle with safety-minded people like you at the Liberty City Gun Club. Our nation is still the world leader in one thing, armaments. Nothing says excitement like a night out with a small caliber semi-automatic weapon. Get social at the Liberty City Gun Club. Well, yeah, it's getting tough out there. Yeah, no doubt. I work in home invasions, mostly. Some murder, uh, occasional rape, if she's hot, <laughs> or really bitchy. Uh, and I'm a huge advocate of gun control, absolutely. Every time I kick in a door or smash a window, I face the possibility of being shot and killed. Allowing citizens to own guns creates a hostile work environment for me and my associates. No one should have to work under under those conditions. Well, I say make them all illegal, absolutely. I mean, I break the law for a living. I'm a professional, so it doesn't really bother me. No doubt. This is no doubt. Your local violent criminals work hard and put their lives on the line every time they attempt to murder, rape, abduct, or assault a member of the citizenry. They desperately need your help. With your support, there may finally come a day when a violent criminal can have his way with you or someone you love without the fear, anxiety, and stress caused by knowing there's a possibility his victim might be armed. Please show your support by voting for stronger anti-gun legislation because criminals prefer unarmed citizens. Technology is created that upends the foundations of society. The wheel, the printing press, the internet. Now, in a world sliding into financial chaos, a new technology is changing the way monetary systems work around the world. It is called Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a new form of money, controlled not by banks, governments, or corporations, but through mutual commerce between free individuals. To learn more, visit WeUseCoins.com. Do you have a group or organization founded on the principles of personal liberty, health freedom, or accountable government? We invite you to check out Same Side Entertainment. Same Side is a source for activists and liberty organizations to connect with well-known leaders in today's growing movement for sustainable living, personal liberty, and sovereignty issues. Same Side has a variety of keynote speakers, debate panels, interactive web presentations, musicians, and liberty-based entertainment, as well as services for web design, graphic design, video, and photography. Same Side can help customize your event by connecting you to the best of the liberty and political world while staying within your budget. Get connected with leaders in the liberty movement like Tom Woods, Kevin Gutzman, Jack Hunter, Robert Scott Bell, Bob Murphy, Michael Scheuer, John Bush, Jordan Page, Tatiana Moroz, and many more. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and our website at www.samesideentertainment.com. Again, that's www.samesideentertainment.com. Same Side Entertainment, connecting you with the education and resources you need. To think something so small could control you. And everything you do. When your life and all you love are on the line. The RFID chip is always with you, threatening your privacy, causing severe risk to your health and personal safety, and killing you if you do not obey rogue government demands. Because I want to increase my risk of cancer. Because I want to live in a cash-free society. Because now, the government is looking out for us. Because I have the mark of the beast. But it doesn't have me. Ask your doctor how to get your chip implanted today. 
because we want to track your every move. Thanks for listening to FPRN. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. If you'd like to start your own show with FPRN, advertise with us or donate to the network or to your favorite shows, check out our website at www.fprnradio.com. You're listening to the Cop Block Radio Show on FPRN and syndicated across the interwebs. Or you can download us as a podcast. Or if you already listen to the show live and you want to hear more, we have archives at FPRNradio.com. So if you just go to our show tab, they're all right there. And I'm going to say this right off the bat. The, uh, the, the courtesy of using a Brita pitcher is to replace the water that you took. I guess happened. In- <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry, I was muted. I, was, I tried to respond. I was like, "Oh, he can't hear me." <laughs> no, I go no. upstairs to get a drink of water, and yes. the Brita pitcher has maybe half of a glass in it. Okay, replace the water that you take. <laughs> Fill the pitcher back up when you use it. <laughs> Simple as that. Using a Brita sounds like you need a better filter anyway. You got to fl- filter out that fluoride. <laughs> well, I, oh yeah, I am on municipal water right now. Usually, yeah. I'm not. I usually have well water, so I don't really ah. need to filter. But no, right you're now, well I'm water. On you're a, good to go. Yeah, don't filter that stuff. That's good for you. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> crap, what were we talking about before we went to break? <laughs> oh, we were talking. We, we were talking about government and our monuments being shut down. Oh, okay. You're in discussion. I got right? I got nothing more on that, so it's cool. Oh, okay. No, I was I was in full agreement with you on the uh, the fact of the, with the activism. If you're not going to do something like that, and you're going to blatantly violate a rule, and, and supposedly trespass on our own property, um, and, yeah, I, I agree with you. Pick up the trash. Do something so they look like idiots when they try to do something to you or fine you for doing that. I mean, that's awesome. I mean, they come to you and they're like, look, he trespassed on the national park when it was closed, but he. He hiked out like three bags of garbage. So I mean, really, was it that bad? No. <laughs> right. There was yeah. um. There's been a lot of open carry litter pickups around New Hampshire, and I remember one. Uh, I believe it took place uh, around the Occupy movement, where a bunch of occupiers stayed in one of the parks. I believe it was in Manchester, New Hampshire. And there is a um, hours of operation for that park. So you can't be in the park between 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. So a t- they, uh, they the cops came in, were kicking all the protesters out, and they ended up arresting a bunch of people. So for that, uh, a bunch of open carry activists also... Um, they went out at five in the morning, which is an hour before people are spo- are supposedly allowed in the park, and started picking up litter while open carrying. Um, and, and I believe nothing ended up coming of that. They were in the park outside during restricted hours, but how can you stop people from picking up litter outside of those <laughs> those hours? So it was a. Uh, I, that that was a good example of that going over well. Wow! Well, I mean, curfews in general on public spaces yeah. just seem asinine. Like if they you're do. not if you're not bothering anybody, who gives a crap? Well, uh, curfews in general on anything, in my opinion, is uh, I mean, really, <laughs> you're gonna tell me when and when I can't do something? No. <laughs> Right, I'm sorry. especially on adults. Yes. Freaking curfews on adults. I, I have no idea why why those exist. Just like how bars can't serve alcohol after a certain time. It's like, who, who says? And, and why can you speak for me and tell me when is too late to have a drink or something? Yeah, no, that's, that's crap too. It's like, what if I work third shift 
and I get off of work at seven in the morning. Seven in the morning is my nighttime. So why can't I have a freaking yeah. beer or something with my breakfast? I've, I've had that that same exact issue before with, with the fact I worked a, a nighttime job and yeah, you get off early in the morning and I'm like, a, a guy was getting off at like, I think 2.30 in the morning and of course all bars are closed. I'm like, wow, doesn't look like I get to go have a beer. I know, <laughs> I that's like... the store and buy one. <laughs> I mean, man, that would open up a whole new like revenue stream of people who work second shift to get off at like midnight. Man, you'd be in the money if you had a bar that could stay open all night. Exactly. And there are there there there's 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 states that allow that. It's just a lot of us don't. <laughs> yeah, this one doesn't unfortunately. Okay, this, this one, one. <laughs> where I live uh just recently passed that bars can serve alcohol until 2 in the morning. Yet the city of Keene has an ordinance that says 1 in the morning and for some reason the city ordinance overrules the state Somehow law. Somehow superseding the state rule? Yeah. I didn't. I didn't think that was allowed. <laughs> I didn't think so either. But apparently, it is here. <laughs> apparently, the city believes that they're better than the state. <laughs> yeah. It's kind. Of, yeah, it's really messed up. Yeah, as far as I as far as I understood, yeah, it, uh, state law over always superseded city law or county or any of it. I I guess it has to have some sort of preemption law or whatever. Um, Maybe I haven't read the original law, so I don't know if the extension contained wording saying that cities can regulate it stricter if they want. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's in there. Well, you know what they say about unjust laws. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's my thought on it. Yeah. What? <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> I wasn't sure what that was for a second. I was like, "Wait, what? Were my kids crying?" <laughs> that was a good one. Good one, producers. Great one. <laughs> so, um, we hadn't talked about it, and it wasn't even my show prep, and I forgot all about it until I, we were doing I did the show. Too. I just saw you put that there, and I was like, "Oh crap!" Yeah. <laughs> so, do you have a good narrative to to lay out for it? Do you want me to go for it? Uh, either way, I, I watched the video, I, I read it all, so e either way is fine with me. Go for it, you probably might have a little more than me. Alright, alright, so basically, so so Pete went down to the Bay Area, um, I believe he was, um, I'm not exactly Oakland. sure where. Now what? Oakland. Oakland, yeah, yeah, he was in Oakland. Um, went to uh, the meetup spot where he was supposed to be meeting up for his uh, police accountability tour. Um, he went roughly about an hour early just to show up and, and check out the surrounding area and make sure he was comfortable with it and everything, um, and started filming an interaction of the police uh, uh, talking to a gentleman. Um, the police obviously noticed that he was recording. Um, he recorded for quite a while um, from what I got from the video. Um, uh, when they finished the situation, uh, Pete asked them to identify themselves Um Name, badge number specifically. Uh, the one officer basically refused, uh, didn't actually refuse, refused, just walked away. So Pete followed him partially into the street. Uh, didn't actually go out into like a lane of traffic. It was uh, the side where the cars are parked on the side of the street. And so he stepped out where the cars were parked. He didn't actually, from the video, didn't actually protrude out into the lane of traffic where the officer was. Uh, the officer instantly turned around, snapped at him, said that he uh, had followed him out. That was was jaywalking. He'd followed him out in the street and, and called it jaywalking, which was extremely hypocritical with the fact that the officer was standing out in the middle of the street and Pete was just off the sidewalk in basically the parking lane. <laughs> um, so Pete, you know, tried to defend himself with the fact of, no, I'm not jaywalking. All I was asking for was your name and badge number. Um, officer kept saying that he wanted Pete's information. Uh, Pete asked if he was being detained over and over. They started telling him, yes, he was being detained. Pete said, what for? They said, because he was jaywalking. He's like, I wasn't jaywalking. Um, am I being detained? Am I free to go? And the officers just kept harassing him about the jaywalking and, and demanding for his identification um, and ended up um, taking his camera away, setting it on the car, 
Um, one of the other officers noticed that the, the camera was facing them, slammed the camera, spun it around. Um, they ended up arresting him and taking him down to the local precinct, uh, processing him. He had no ID on him, so they had to process him. Um, was arrested for, I believe, the jaywalking incident, um, and then released. And actually ended up going back to the same location after he was released and refilming the same officers again. <laughs> <laughs> which at that point they didn't arrest him <laughs> and he tried to get comments from them and they basically refused to discuss the arrest in general at all. Yeah, I this was this was interesting and it was a very um thin veiled retaliation that they were conducting upon him because they claimed he was jaywalking even though he had not passed the line of parked cars so you know how you can park along the road in, in mm-hmm. parking spots right up against the sidewalk obviously if you walk between the car to go to the driver's side door you're not you're not jaywalking well, to get well, if you go to the car. passenger side even because they were on the other side of the street so i mean right. if he was if one of, if his car was parked there who how is the officer supposed to know he wasn't walking to the passenger side of his car Right, and so yeah. he he didn't even break the plane of what would be considered the traveling section of the roadway. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how they could get him for jaywalking because he wasn't crossing the street and he wasn't in the lane of travel. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was in the lane of parking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and he was like maybe two steps out into it, maybe, from, right. from he, the angle it looked he, in his video. Right, he hadn't even broken the plane of the, the cars. Yeah. Um, so it, 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 that was that was interesting, but the the big thing was that he had his cell phone or a audio recording device of some sort that kept rolling the entire time. Mm-hmm. He did, and that had the interesting. Oh, the interesting audio. comments the officers were making. Sorry, I did forget that part. Yeah. <laughs> I was focusing on what what happened, but yeah, when they. When they had handcuffed him and, uh, and demanding his ID from him, and he he was refusing, basically they went off and said he was a, a sovereign citizen, uh, basically a scumbag piece of crap. Screw him. Who cares? It, it was it was blatant disrespect and obvious paranoia by the police officers. In my opinion, they were like scared of him, <laughs> right? <laughs> because and he had no ID. They were terrified was, of him. It was obvious retaliation because a lot, they were just saying, you know, like, fuck him. And and they were no, they essentially were. trying to pin something on him. They were. They were like, well, we've got to come up with a reason to shoot this guy or something. <laughs> you know, he's a sovereign citizen. Maybe he's got a knife or something. You know, it was it was crap. It was just blatant, blatant disrespect towards Pete. So now because, I'm curious what yeah. he's going to do because... Now he has a, a citation, <laughs> a citation out of Oakland. So how is he going to possibly fight that? Yeah, that's what I was curious too, because he doesn't discuss that in the video about the after of it at all. And I'm curious, is he going to? I'm assuming, obviously, he's probably got some time before he has to take care of this citation. Um, right, just like it, it might be a lot. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, I just had, I was arrested on August 31st I had a arraignment on October 2nd and I don't have a trial until the end of January so yeah. it's going to be yeah. 6 months between or well, maybe not 6 months exactly what 1 2 3 4 five, 5 months between arrest and trial so who the <laughs> hell knows how long it's going to take in Oakland Exactly yeah it could be months and months down the road but obviously then he's going to either have to either do it by by mail if he can if he can pull it off or he's going to have to go back down to Oakland and go to court. That's, yeah, it's basically, that, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of why it sucks to do activism outside of your home base. Yeah, or out of your state at least. I mean, it makes it much more difficult. <laughs> yeah, the travel, oh man, that would yeah. suck to have to travel. Yeah, because now, I mean, either he's got to pay the ransom fee or... Yeah, or he's going to go go back. And, I mean, realistically, going back is going to cost him more than the ransom probably is. Right. And who knows what the they would do if he just let it and never paid it. Yeah. yeah. He'd essentially not be able to go back to, to California. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Only if it was that easy. Only if it was that easy, producers. What, why did he say I didn't read it? Oh, that. he says do the trial via Skype. <laughs> why and aren't he said they he would doing host it. digital courtrooms at this point? It seems such a waste of freaking. They they, they do to an extent. I had a, a well, it wasn't it wasn't completely like that, but it was video camera to the courthouse. I had to uh, do a uh, a piece like that when I was arrested in Idaho. Um, we were in the local jail, and the courthouse was obviously in another part of town. Um, and they actually put me on video with a TV in front of me and had me talk to the judge over a video camera and a TV monitor. Yeah, they'll do arraignments over the video, but well, yeah. why, why can't you do a remote trial? It makes no, it, it, it's mm-hmm. there's no reason for it to have to take place in some designated room when we have the technology to avoid that. Well, yeah, I mean they got facial recognition software. I mean they can prove it's you. <laughs> I'm sure they could. Somehow they could scan your face through the video image and be like, "Yep, yep, that's that guy." <laughs> well, it doesn't. It's not like they take your ID when you go to trial, no, anyways. They don't. They don't. They don't ask for your ID to prove who you are at right. all. You, technically, realistically, if you're just doing something like that, you could you could totally. I could go in for you, Eric, and just stand up for your court date. <laughs> That, that's interesting. I wonder if <laughs> what man, that would that? really fuck them up if somebody <laughs> stood in as somebody else because they don't check the ID. Yeah, they don't. Man, that would be maybe. interesting. Maybe we should try that on a really man. petty petty charge, though, so we don't get in a lot of trouble. <laughs> maybe we shouldn't because that's probably a – they'll probably hit you with a felony if they figure it out. <laughs> probably impersonating someone else, yeah. Yeah, that's probably – It would be interesting to look into and see what that actually uh, – what what – uh, oh, oh, producers are saying fraud. <laughs> yeah, it fraud would be what funny, level, though? <laughs> but uh, I don't think they would uh, they would find it too hum- uh, humorous, and uh, they probably well, it's not technically ident. Well, yeah, I guess it's identity well, it's fraud extent, if you're yeah, posing as somebody else, even if you're posing as somebody else with their permission. Yeah, with their permission to to defend represent them. you. <laughs> yeah, I'm representing be your proxy. <laughs> That's, yeah. that's interesting. You're so, still defrauding the system. <laughs> yeah, and the system doesn't give a shit. They won't. They would not I don't care funny. about the system. <laughs> so, so yeah, that will be interesting. Yeah. So it yeah, oh. I was just talking about my my case to my sister the the today because my mom finally found out about it on Sunday because it was in the paper because I pled not guilty. So of course they put it in the paper. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> oh, it's such, it's such BS anyways. It's like I shouldn't even – like I wasn't even trying to get arrested and I wasn't doing anything that would have warranted arrest data anyways. So it's yeah. like fucking A. I didn't yeah. do anything and I ended up getting arrested anyways. So uh, oh, well, freaking that A. Doesn't, yeah. That just doesn't seem to stop him anytime. If you no, know. it doesn't, and that, that's the problem. It's like I wasn't even trying to do anything, but I have been researching the crap out of this, and they are going to be so screwed anyways. Like I got like five United States Supreme Court cases that trump what they did to me, and there's also a New Hampshire specific one that trumps what they did. So there's there's a specific New Hampshire case law. That says that checkpoints can't be used for the purpose of checking license and registration, which is exactly what they were doing. At That's this exactly what they did. <laughs> so uh, they already have a problem at the New Hampshire level, but at the at the federal level, there's like case there's like a laundry list of case law that says you can't stop people to check their license and registration without reasonable suspicion of a crime and all that just mm-hmm. you know, all that good stuff. So. Nice, nice choice of words there. <laughs> what? And all that jizz. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what I was, where I was going. That that was actually not a word that I was trying to say, and I don't remember what the word, the the in between word was supposed to be. Ja- I think it was probably jazz. I'm thinking you were trying to say jazz. Yeah, jazz. <laughs> it, it came but, out yeah. wrong. So Sorry. Uh, it's funny because on the there's something on the on the paperwork that I got that said you have to notify the court if the 
trial is going to go more than a half hour. It's like, how would I know that? <laughs> now, now what? I don't know if it's going to go Listen for to, a half hour. No, notify them if you know if it's going to go over a half an hour. Yeah. Oh, like if you're going to give a speech? Are you going to give so, a speech or something? <laughs> yeah. no, so then on making a scene. Crap, I so I don't know. You're the time. one who's bringing these charges. Shouldn't you know how long it's going to take? Though you don't know how long I'm going to take to decimate the friggin' state trooper. So we'll see. That's true. They may know who you are and what you're involved in. <laughs> and they're like, oh, this guy may give us a big spiel. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. It's gonna. Uh, it's probably going to take more than a half hour, but. Well, yeah, I don't know. It might take less. I can probably wing through it pretty quickly if uh, if he gives straight answers for every question that I ask. Yeah, but he probably yeah. won't. Yeah, I'm probably gonna be beat around the bush and stuff. So probably. Yeah, you just walk in there and just be like, you know what? Quit it with all this jizz. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not do that because friggin', I don't want to contempt. Oh, sorry, I meant I meant jazz. <laughs> <laughs> A contempt charge is a little more than a fine. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. A fine I'm yes. facing. I don't want to up the ante on that one. Yeah, that's true. So that so you got to go in January. January thirtieth. Jeez, that's still a long ways away. Yeah, I know, and I'm not a hundred percent sure on what my bail conditions are because I don't know if they changed from my arrest to after my arraignment. They never really told me. Really? But it's fine, so I have no idea why I would have bail conditions anyways. Well, no lie. So huh. I'm assuming the original conditions are still in place, but I'm not 100% sure. Huh. What were the original conditions? Uh, you know, it's just the typical don't get arrested. <laughs> don't get or in trouble while don't you're get charged with another misdemeanor or felony <laughs> or no alcohol, uh, something That's else. That's so much crap. <laughs> Yeah. So you get arrested I, I, because I, you wouldn't give them your registration. You can't drink now. <laughs> How does that make any sense? I I don't know. It, th- those things never make sense. Why would you punish somebody prior to actually being convicted of anything? Exactly. Yeah. Because bail it, conditions are essentially pre-punishment. They are. Yeah. Because you, you I, I know I I mean there's people here who are currently on bail conditions and their bail conditions are extensive. Oh yeah. Um, And, like, the people who um, pled not guilty during, like, for any of the alcohol violations, part of their bail conditions was to have no alcohol in their house. Not just them, but anybody who lives with them. So anybody who lives with them can't have alcohol either, or they can't have a firearm in the house or anything like that. It's like, not only are you punishing the person before they're actually convicted, but you're punishing all the people who live with them. Well, you're taking away freedoms from the people that are there. I mean, what is, who's to say it's even the person that's getting in trouble's house? What if they're living with their family and it's their house? Then you're going to be able to tell, force that law on them and be like, oh, now you can't. Because this person resides with you, you can't have this. Right, exactly. That makes no sense. And it's just like the, the whole issue with a firearm. If you live with somebody who's a felon and can't own a firearm, you're not allowed to have one in the house either. That's I, I don't see how... Why do other people's loss of, or why does other people's punishment have to affect anybody else? It it makes no, it makes no sense. And the pre-punishment thing is a whole bunch of bull anyways. That would would be a violation of that person's constitutional rights then. Right. And and, taking away rights and freedoms of theirs because of someone else's actions, that's a complete violation of their constitutional rights. Right, and that's one of the problems I already have with how they treated me anyways because they towed my car, which cost me $200. Yeah. So it's like a pre-punishment before they actually get to trial, even though I'm like, I have a friend that's 50 feet away who can take my car. My friend was standing right there on the side of the road. He could have taken my car. There was no reason for them to tow it other than to be dickheads and make me punish me before I'm actually found guilty of anything. Okay. Come on, Eric. They're, they're police officers. They have to be dickheads. <laughs> well, so on that note, they have to be dickheads. And uh, that's, right. that's it for the Cop Lock Radio Show this week. Be sure to tune in at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, 6.30 p.m. Pacific at fprnradio.com. And until next week, remember that badges don't grant extra rights.
Thanks for listening to FPRN. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. If you'd like to start your own show with FPRN, advertise with us or donate to the network or to your favorite shows, check out our website at www.fprnradio.com.